Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to be walking you through the beginning stages of assembling the Automata project. Um, this is actually for a lesson 4.5 cams in motion, but we're going to bring it up again later on in project 8.2 whenever you do the Automata project for real. Just to give you an idea of what you're getting ready to go into, um, you're going to do something like this. Okay, You can see we have a little crank toy, we got cams on the inside, and we got some stuff moving up and down. These are called followers. Okay. That's what we're going to be in to assemble using the parts that we were given for activity 4.5 because we really want to study how the cam shape here um, affects the motion of the object up at the top. Okay, So back to Fusion 360, we have all these parts that we downloaded and put and, and uploaded excuse me, into Fusion 360 last time and now we're going to start to assemble them. We're going to start with just the box. It's really simple to do, okay? But first, in order to drag and drop parts from one file into the next one, which is what we're going to do, we have to first save it. Okay, so we're going to call this then 4.5 um, assembly. Okay, that's a good name. We're going to click save. 4.5 assembly is created. Okay, here's the placeholder for it. The first thing I'm going to put inside of the assembly is the box. I just drag and drop it over, give it a second to kind of work. There we go. Okay, it's created. It's grounded, or it's at the origin. Okay, I'm just going to click OK. I don't want to do anything else with this. Okay, there is a box. There's the first part of my atomic project. I'm going to go close down this real quick. There we go. I think that might be uh, slowing down my computer. So here we go. The next thing we're going to do then is we're going to place the axle handle. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to drag and drop it into the design. It's thinking. Okay, so now, first thing we notice is it may be around the correct height, not quite, but it's close enough, okay? But it isn't at the correct angle. So I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna click on this one. I'm gonna swing it around, and I'm gonna type in the word 90, or the letter 90. The letter, the number 90, okay? I guess it's getting late, time for bed, okay? Now I can see that this thing is kind of in the correct location, but it's definitely in the correct orientation, okay? I need to place it about right here, but it's not so necessary that I get it there right now. Okay. The first thing I want to do, actually, I, I forgot to do this earlier. I need to go through first and I need to make sure this box can't move because everything wants to lock into the box. So I'm going to right click on the box. I'm going to choose ground and ground is a way of anchoring it in place. So those little push pin shows up right here. And what it means is I cannot take that box. I click on it. I cannot move it around anywhere as, as opposed to like this that I can drag around. Okay. So the box is locked into place, it is grounded, and now we have the actual follower that kind of goes into place, okay? Now, let's take this handle and let's move it where it needs to be. The way that we do this in Fusion 360 is we assemble using joints. J is your keyword or your key letter for this, okay? When I click on joint, it's going to ask me a couple of things. It wants to know continue or capture position. For most of the time, we're going to do continue. Okay. But every once in a while, if you get into an important location, you're like, ah, I need this design to be in this exact setup moving forward. We can capture the position, and that gives us the ability to go back to this particular location, like whenever the axle was in this position or the follower rod was in this position, whatever it is, um, and it'll show up in our timeline down here. Okay, For now, we're just going to click continue. And it asks me what I want to do. It asks me for two components. It's going to ask me whether I want to flip those components. And it's going to ask me what type of motion do I actually want. So I'm going to show you for this particular one how we're going to move forward. Okay, It's really simple. Now, first of all, the two components, when you choose them, the first component is going to move to the second component. I want this to move to be inside of the hole here. Okay, So I'm going to come over here. I'm just going to click on the end of that axle. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to click on the end that box and notice it says rigid now here's the thing about a rigid constraint rigid means non-moving and I don't want it to be that I want the axle to be able to turn so I'm going to come over here I'm going to choose a revolute constraint instead okay and you can see now that's the kind of motion it's going to allow it's going to animate it every single time and that looks awesome okay so I'm going to click OK and now I have an axle that turns inside of the box how about that? Okay. The next thing I'm going to do then is I'm going to come over here. I'm going to drag and drop the follower into place. It's thinking, it's thinking. Here we go. Okay, there it is. All right. Now, this little hammerhead shape is going to go at the bottom. So I can see immediately that I need to take this thing and flip it up. I'm going to type in negative 90. 
because that gets us in the upright position. I would have known, by the way, if I would have typed in 90, look, it's upside down, okay? So you, you could have typed in 270, would have done the same thing. Just make sure that little hammerhead shape is on the, on the ground, okay, on the bottom, excuse me, and enter, okay? Now, I can't see it. Where is it? It's inside the shape. Let's go find a view. There it is, okay? I'm going to move this up a little bit just to make it visible. And my goal is to get this in the center of the object. Now, this is a little bit different. Last time, we, we took the endpoint and moved it to the endpoint. But this time, rather than being able to spin around in a circle this way, we want it to be able to go up and down. Okay? That's a different type, type of constraint. So all we're going to do is we're going to hit J for joint. I'm going to continue. I want this object, click, to move inside of... Notice I've got the whole cylinder there, okay? Not just the top or the bottom, but i got the whole cylinder. Right now, there's the revolute constraint. It says you want to spin that way. No, 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 no. What I want is a slider, okay? And notice the slider now, it animates up and down. Click OK. Now, I have a follower rod. Now, it can go as far as it wants to. We'll address that later, okay? It floats to the middle of the box. We'll address that later, okay? But it can go up and down. Last thing we're going to do is we're going to go add the guide. The guide is a little piece that sits on top of the box, and all it does is it kind of positions this follow rod and keeps it from rattling around. We can see that it needs to be upright, so we're going to drag this thing. We're going to go negative 90 degrees, and um, we're going to hit J for joint. We're going to continue forward. I'm going to make sure then, um, notice then this one, I'm going to grab the um, bottom, that's the bottom opening, okay? I'm going to click on the bottom opening. Go over here. I'm going to click on the top. We don't want that thing to move. That thing is going to be glued down. We're going to use hot glue or something on this whenever we build it for real. So in this case, it's the rigid constraint that we want to use. And it locks it into place. It cannot move. We choose OK. So you now have a box. In seven minutes of video time, we have a box where we have an axle that spins, we have a guide that's locked into place, a box that's locked into a place, and a follower that moves up and down. That's a pretty great start. So this video is going to be over. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to drag and drop a cam into place and get that cam to be positioned where it'll actually push the follower rod up and down.